Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 37. Completing the twin steam turret supports by making and fitting some decorative items to the top and bottom parts of the columns. This video shows how I made them. A lot of the pieces of metal that I use are chucking pieces that are left over from industrial processes. Periodically I go and visit a friend of mine and look through his scrap bin. A lot of the metal that I buy I get from Blackgate's engineering. It's cut to the size that I want and it's always very good quality. But for this job I'm just using a very short piece of brass bar. With a round nose tool fitted in the tool post I'm shaping the end of the brass bar. Making one-off parts is easy. Duplicating parts can be more difficult. I'm showing a method which is possibly not the best method to make two collars for the bottom of the columns using this piece of brass. What size is it? I really have no idea. It just looks about right for the job I want it to do. After obtaining the external shape, it's time to thread the middle part. I should really do this by hand. It's a much better idea. As you can see, it keeps grabbing the tap. But today I'm working in my recording studio later, so I need to get a move on making this video. I would not do it this way if this was a piece of steel, because it would possibly break the tap. All's well that ends well, and I now have a really nice quarter by 40 threads per inch thread in the centre of this collar. Now I'm parting it off, so that's one completed. There are many different ways to make things like this. I don't think I need to discuss all of them, but let's just have a think about it. This is a very short piece of brass bar. What I could do is machine one end like you've just seen me do, and before parting off the first bit, I could turn the piece of bar around in the chuck, and without altering the settings of the cutting tool in the tool post, just repeat the process at the other end. The part isn't really long enough to make it stick out of the chuck too far. I could have used a longer piece of brass, drilled it, threaded it, and machine a deep groove with the round nose tool, and then part it off in the middle of that. Rightly or wrongly, I did it this way. After the part had cooled in the chip tray, because parting off causes bits to get hot, I fitted the component back into the chuck. I aligned it using the quarter by 40 threads per inch tap that was already in the tailstock chuck. By doing it this way, the part is repositioned in the chuck very accurately. All I then had to do was use it as a template to set the position of the round nose tool, back to exactly as it was previously when I turned this part. I refitted the piece of brass bar and simply turned this to the same size or nearly the same size as the part I've already made. Brass is very easy to machine if the tool is sharp and this tool is sharp so it's machining easily. Unfortunately though, it's not far enough out of the chuck. I stopped the lathe, moved the piece of brass bar further out in the chuck and continued the operation. Time now to part off this bit as well. You can see here how small the piece of brass bar is getting now. I'm sure it will be fine for some other job in the future, so I will be putting this back into my box of little bits. Sit back and relax, take your medication, because it's top tip time. In this clip I'm showing how to align a pre-threaded part back in the chuck using the tap that cut the thread, which of course is in the tailstock chuck. This allows you to accurately position a part in the main chuck. If the centre part of a component wasn't threaded, you could simply use a piece of bar to the same diameter as the hole. I do things like this a lot. I've mentioned many, many times I'm not a machinist. I never wanted to be one. Besides, this method works for me. I'm making two of these, and the other one you can't see because it's on the shelf just above the lathe where I keep all my tooling. I'm copying the original part just by looking at it, and it's more than accurate enough for the part that this component is going to play in the scheme of things. After reducing the length of this part, it's time to assemble it. Here's one of the uprights, and this is some Loctite 603 retainer, very strong stuff. Here I'm coating the thread with Loctite 603, and because the tailstock chuck is not tight in the taper, I can rotate it and screw the column into the fitting. Almost immediately, I turn the part round in the chuck. 
I'm doing two things here. First of all, I'm machining the end of the column, which was a bit too long. Then I'm also going to reduce the thickness of the flange at the bottom. Not by much, just a small amount. Once this part of the job was complete, I fitted the other column in the chuck and did exactly the same. Just a thought, it is quite important to put the columns in the right way round. And what I'm currently machining is the one with the hole in the centre that is threaded 2BA. I think it's only fair to mention, before any expert know-it-all viewers tell me that I'm doing it wrong, I do appreciate that a 2BA thread in the centre of a piece of quarter-inch brass bar, which is also threaded on the outside quarter by 40, is not very strong. But now that the column is securely fastened into this part that I've made using Loctite 603, I don't ever think it's going to break. The next part of the job is to make sure that the bases are both absolutely identical. That's simple. After machining the first one, I fitted the second one and didn't change the position of the cutting tool. And by taking a facing cut, now both of these components are exactly the same as each other. For the experts, I would just like to mention that this rule does not apply at subatomic level. But it's perfectly fine for the two bases of the two columns for this steam turret. To finish the job, I'm running a tap down the 2BA thread. Because when I originally cut this thread using a spiral tap, it was actually a bit tight. This is an old plug tap, but it's not worn. I made a couple more collars that I didn't show because this was absolute simplicity. Just two collars to fit on the other end. Both of them are plain with just one end chamfered. It finishes off the job nicely. A dummy run tells me it's OK. Before I fit the columns, I need to fit the centre union for the steam connection. Please note, for the steam connection, I am not using Loctite 603. This red stuff is Loctite 542, hydraulic thread sealant. While I'm at it, I'm applying some to each of the holes. After fitting a copper washer to this union, I'm tightening it in place using my trusty Barco spanner. You will notice that this spanner does not round the edges of the hexagon part of the fitting. And now finally, it's time to fit the columns in place. I screw them tightly into the holes, and don't forget the Loctite 542 is already in there. But oh no, shock horror, I don't have a hexagon facility. How can I possibly screw these columns permanently into the holes in the turret? The answer is simple. I fitted two 2BA bolts into the bottom of the columns and used a screwdriver to tighten both of the columns into the turret. Once the Loctite 542 had cured, all I had to do was untighten the bolts and remove them altogether. I would like to mention something which is relative to a comment that I received regarding a video which was about something entirely different. The comment was something about holes not being in the right place, referring to the holes in the saddle tank to take the fittings that had made being in the wrong place. This is utter nonsense. There is nothing wrong with the hole positions or the length of these columns. This is what is happening before I get any more silly comments. Optical aberration is a property of optical systems such as lenses and camera angles. That is why this image and others are distorted by the camera. Both of the columns are exactly the same length. Once again, to illustrate the point, this image looks a bit wrong. It's almost as though the columns are leaning, but they aren't. They are perfectly the same length. From a different camera angle, it looks like the other column is now a different length. When I place this steam turret on the bench, it just stands there, looking like some kind of steampunk robot from the future. And that, my friends, is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.